Hi everyone, I would like to invite you on today's functional group update uh, for the CICD team. Let's maybe uh, start. Okay, the first slide, as always, is something that we are just very proud of. It's uh, our accomplishments. Uh, like, what, well, actually, what our biggest accomplishment for 10.0 is Auto DevOps. It was a very big story that involved uh, a lot of people. Uh, it involved also help of Dimitri, uh, Alessio, Mark, Fabio, uh, Filippa, Ziger, uh, me, and Grzegorz. I believe that I mentioned everyone. Uh, but actually, what is important that we uh, managed to do it. We managed to close this story in, in a beta phase, which kind of resulted in closing something like about 40 issues in total. You can click the links and see exactly what we did. Uh, there are just different parts of that story that has to be done. But also what is important that it was not the only thing that we did kind of accomplished in 10.0 because we actually move on a bunch of other things that are very important for uh, CICD uh, at GitLab.com, but also for our customers. For example, we introduced protected runners, something that was done by Shinya. It's like the very clever concept which, which allows you to limit the usage of your runner to only your protected branches. Uh, it's very clever, it's very easy to use. You just uh, tick uh, a checkbox on your runner settings page, but also something completely different. It's like the, a lot of cleanup, removal, and deprecations that we kind of had finally an opportunity to do in 10.0. Uh, for a very long time, we use the GitLab CI multi-runner uh, as a name of GitLab runner, which is in fact GitLab runner. And we actually kind of make this uh, transition to happen in this release. From 10.0, we just use uh, GitLab runner everywhere, also for our binaries names and in our, our documentations. So make sure that you update your bookmarks. Um, but also we had a chance to like, remove and deprecate a few things like the types keyword, legacy triggers. We also deprecated auto deploy, which is right now part of auto DevOps, but we actually finally removed the old CI API, which was like the part, which was like introduced basically with the GitLab CI when it was still like the separate product, separate to uh, GitLab, not really something that was integrated. But like always, uh, not everything goes right and we did not manage to do everything that we planned. Uh, basically, uh, these two issues, bishing dependency, you should fail job, runner took non-existing, sorry, using external URL were deliverables. We, we did not manage to do them um, in, the, in, the, in the merge window, but we also did not ma manage to finish uh, some very important runner parts of the story. So basically, we uh, kind of expected that 10.0 will also be a time where we follow closely GitLab release and the GitLab release process where there is this strong seventh, uh, strong uh, closing, merge window, closing window at seventh, and then we actually do RCs and uh, release at GitLab. But it did not happen. Uh, we are still kind of trying to fix that now. And also we had like for, uh, big plans for production readiness for 10.0. We only kind of solved part of the story, not really everything that we uh, had planned for, for that release. And uh, Bitcoin miners are still annoying. Uh, there is like great help on, on this story from Brian, who is like looking and looking through logs and, and blocking them. Uh, we did not see uh, them for a couple of days already, but um, it's like they are striking back every same time. So we need to be aware. Mm. But maybe um, this was like the past. Let's talk about what is now and what is in the future. So 10.1, mm, as always, we plan very optimistically. We plan that we will be able to ship a lot. And this is usually what happens. So our direction feature for 10.0 is basically following our Kubernetes story, uh, following our GKE, GKE integration. 
So we try to implement ability to create the Kubernetes cluster and hook this Kubernetes cluster to your uh, GitLab projects right from the GitLab. We also, something that we, we actually miss the merging of something like three days, uh, by three days. We just continue finishing the HTML public artifacts uh, that is based on pages. It seems like we should have this ready uh, like next week. But also there is a lot of about performance scalability and that we are following every month. And something that we become more important is CI/CD quotas. Uh, something that is like after um, uh, something something to figure out after uh, the Bitcoin miners issue. What we can do actually to make GitLab to prevent this kind of abuses. And this is CI/CD quotas tries to figure out what kind of things we have to implement uh, at GitLab for GitLab.com to make it easier for us. If you have some ideas, please click this link. It's confidential uh, because there are some uh, uh, basic confidential informations. But we are also working, uh, we are uh, continuing our work on improving object storage for artifacts. Plan for 10.0 is actually to make it possible to uh, upload artifacts automatically. Right now it just requires manual intervention. And uh, there is the long requested support request uh, ability to paginate registry list, uh, something that is very big problem today. If you have a lot of uh, different tags uh, pushed to your registry, uh, the current registry page basically times out when trying to load information for uh, all the uh, data. So, uh, but this is 10.1 uh, and the roadmap, it's like we are following our Kubernetes and GKE. We have uh, actually kind of planned the 10.2 right now, but uh, based on the like uh, how we managed to finish 10.2 plans, it will, it will then later depend what is our direction on next releases. Um, Auto DevOps. Auto DevOps right now is beta. Uh, so we just want to like gather feedback, what people think about the Auto DevOps as a feature and get to the uh, GA basically, where it's actually considered production ready. But after Auto DevOps, there is a lot of uh, follow-up and ops features like ops views, where you could like manage um, your applications straight from the GitLab. Improve speed of the CI/CD. This is like the very big task that uh, it's very important. It's very important also for us. It's like uh, different ways for caching your um, uh, stages, different ways to cache your um, results between different uh, stages. Uh, UX is becoming more important. Uh, so we are just like waiting for UX research right now to kind of, um, to make sure that what we are making actually gives the most benefit for our users. But also we are looking at the um, ways where we can say that GitLab CI uh, at gitlab.com can actually scale to 10 times X what is uh, running today. Uh, it's still kind of challenge, quite a big challenge to actually to make it possible, but we are slowly every release iterating on that and we are just being more and more confident that it can happen in the future. Mm. But about CI on GitLab.com, this is actually uh, kind of interesting because I mentioned uh, before about deprecation and removals. So, 10.0 of GitLab removes the support for old runners, basically. The runners that are 8.x, sorry, 1.x, basically. So basically, if you use the runner that is below 9.0, it will not work with GitLab.com. We notified our users uh, by uh, doing mailing to them and also having a blog post and notifying them a few times on a Twitter. But you need to be aware that this can be a problem once we deploy 10.0 RC1. Uh, on, uh, on GitLab. Uh, Bitcoin miners are, as mentioned, mm, with artifacts object storage, we are working on that now. We had uh, some small issues that we are trying to overcome, but so far we basically moved 3.5 terabyte of data to object storage, and it seems that uh, we could, should be able to move the rest of the data in upcoming weeks. Uh, and the CI production readiness, this is something that I 
And that was one of the lowlights, something that we were very ambitious about doing and something that takes uh, quite amount of time. We are right now at the phase of uh, having console cluster running and, and getting the uh, production certificate certificates to actually to hook Prometheus monitoring to this uh, uh, to, to this console cluster and hook any machine that is being spun to this console cluster. But there are also like um, other parts that we are working on. It's like automatic cleanup of un unmatched droplets on DigitalOcean. We today, for example, detect when we have mismatch between the local database and the database that DigitalOcean has, and we can remove the hanging droplets. And we do remove quite significant number of them. But sometimes we also fail to create these droplets uh, um, from, from runners machines, but they still kind of being preserved on uh, managers. So these kind of machines are still not removed. They are not significant amount, but this is still something to reduce the cost of uh, using digital option for CI on GitLab.com. But mm, CI on GitLab.com is not only what we offer to our users, but also how it affects uh, CE and EE testing. For example, something that we've been monitoring for some time and we introduce a number of different improvements for caching, but it also kind of uh, hit us again on the 7th, where we actually saturate uh, network connection on our cache server. Uh, basically, it seems that our network connection on the cache server is something around 2.5 gigabits per second. So basically, we notice that uh, our CE and E testing builds actually being slowed down by inability to fetch the cache fast enough to actually to make use of it. So something to overcome this problem and not really have the problem uh, with the cache server, given our scale for CE and E testing in a way how we run these jobs is to try to use local cache. So basically, we store the cache always on the machine and we use this cache uh, as long as we have this machine, but we don't use the distributed cache server, which actually doesn't give us um, that much benefit today, other than it's like creating uh, pro potential problems with the uh, scale of the cache server and number of them, but also the increased time of this caching phase that has to happen on our builds. Uh, but this is not the only improvement that we are planning to help you with CE and E testing. Uh, for some time, uh, something that was proposed by uh, business people from DigitalOcean and then something that was implemented with the help of uh, Thomas and uh, guidance of Stan uh, was to test high CPU machines for uh, CE and E testing. And it did prove that there is like significant gain basically by uh, switching from uh, two gig machines, the standard two gig machines to high, uh, high single performance uh, CPUs, even if this is two gig. So basically uh, we did a bunch of tests on different size, but also I did run this gig bench performance comparison between C2 and two, two gigs. But like the meta out of it is that C2 on single thread is twice faster. And it's also, it's kind of reflected on the pipelines that we run for CE and EE testing. And right now we are considering um, running small scale tests on for every build one on DEV to see how big impact high CPU machines we have on our <coughs> pipelines, on the stability of them, uh, on the uh, testing time compared that to basically the, the, the cost of, of running, of using these machines. Um, we plan to, as I said, we plan to start with devgitlab.org. Uh, so basically, any job that will be run on devgitlab.org in this testing phase, we'll use uh, C2. Uh, but then we are actually uh, thinking about expanding that to every C and E uh, fork and project that is run on gitlab.com. Uh, today, it seems that it's reasonable to assume that we should get at least 30% uh, faster pipelines for for every uh, tested uh, commit. So this is like quite significant number that I believe that everyone would uh, like to see. Uh, but this is like something different because um, from time to time, we also check how many bits we run on gitlab.com. 
And this is like the trend that you can see that we, on the uh, January, we actually had something about uh, 200,000 bits that we run on gitlab.com. But now we are basically like hitting these uh, 500,000 bits. The blue line actually represents the any runner that is being used. So basically, it includes the specific runners that people use for the and register to their projects, but also as well the uh, shared runners and GitHub CE runners. Like this distribution today, it's like very interesting because it seems that today about 59% of the builds that are run on GitHub.com are being processed by us. Uh, 21 is actually for CE and EE testing, where 38% is basically used uh, for shared runners. It doesn't really tell uh, the full story because this is like the, just a number of jobs being executed. It doesn't tell anything about uh, the durations and, and uh, how much build minutes we spent for each of these buckets. But this is something that is like also uh, kind of interesting to see today. And I will just prepare this uh, comparison for uh, next functional group update. So this kind of shows also how big challenge is for us to make sure that we can scale GitLab CI on gitlab.com to make sure that these 500,000 builds uh, first is not a problem today. Uh, but also, if we assume that in like six months we have two million of builds, it still will not be a problem. So this is why we are considering um, opening this position, looking for more people who could help us in solving this uh, performance scalability, but also a lot of direction um, challenges that we, as you can see, uh, we have. So. Uh, we started working on the draft requirements for next CICD team members, which kind of very clearly describes our goals and what are the key uh, competencies that we are looking for, uh, which will be like the, the base for um, considering uh, opening uh, this uh, position and looking for more people that would help us with that. Um, I believe that this is everything from me. I will happily look for questions. Uh, Gabriel, we are planning anything to prevent search engine spam using HTML uh, built artifacts. Uh, today, we, we don't have anything planned for that. But if you could like join uh, in the issue and describe uh, what you think about and what we should do, uh, we still have plenty of time of, uh, for considering that today. Remy mentioned yes, Kim mentioned woo. Okay, uh, since I don't see any more questions, thank you very much and see you next time.